The Goat Owls is back before Sunday Night Football due to the weather delay, but I'm here breaking down my biggest winners and losers of Week 5 so far. The next video, Monday Night Video, we will break down grade, tier, every single team's Week 5 performance. So don't worry if you're a fan of the Sunday Night or Monday Night teams. We will get to that. But breaking down the biggest winners and losers so far, in my opinion, here we go. The top three biggest winners of Week 5 so far. Tough to narrow it down to just three, and we will give some honorable mentions at the end here. But number three, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears, who had a dominant outing against the Carolina Panthers, winning 36-10. to And yes, of course, it is the Panthers. We expected the Bears to win, but there's a lot of positive energy and steps that the Bears needed to take and made, and they did. They made they made those big steps. They made progress. And that is this was a make or break week for the Chicago Bears. Like if Caleb Williams didn't play his best game yet, if they even if they won and it was sloppy and as close, it wasn't gonna we weren't gonna feel great about progress in the rest of the season for the Bears. So this was either gonna be a big win or a big loss in terms of the Bears for the rest of the season, and they're in that winner's column for sure. We needed to see steps up from not just Caleb Williams, which we did see Caleb Williams, but offensive line needed to play better because the Panthers' pass rush is pretty much non-existent. We saw that. We saw him take advantage. We see DeAndre Swift for a second week in a row kind of get going, whether it's the running game or even the passing game. DJ Moore, there's been some frustration with him and Caleb Williams. He got going in a revenge game, monster game. And the defense continues to do what it's been doing. Like The Panthers, main, the Panthers mainly been... An offensive team, not that like, not that they're the greatest offensive team, but they have they have some explosives under Andy Dalton. Revenge game for him, and the Bears defense did their thing. They're flying around the field, hitting. The, Brisker's really been standing out recently, just making big time plays. So the Bears, in the, and that's great. Not too many teams have a great defense. The Bears have a top deep, one of the top defenses, and that presents matchup issues. The Panthers again, they've been getting offense going, but hey, now they see a top defense. We know the Bears can outplay them in that category. That gives the Bears, the rest of the Bears, a massive advantage. So they went out, took care of business in dominating fashion, and they showed signs of progression, development. They're getting better, things that they just needed to see. So is it? are we going to sit here and say, well, because they beat the Panthers, like, oh, my God, they're set, they're ready to go? Not saying that. This is what we needed to see, a lot of positives, especially things that there's been negatives around. Sometimes Williams, DJ Moore, Swift, I think the offensive line. So great look, what they needed. So the Bears will come in at number three this week. Number two biggest winners going to be the Washington Commanders beating the Cleveland Browns 34-13. to The Commanders got number one in this video last week, just missed. They got number two this week. And I know they beat the Browns, but they dominate them. Thought maybe this could be a trap game because everyone's saying the Commanders haven't played a good defense yet. They play a good defense, or what's supposed to be a good defense in the Browns, they dominate them. They show they can win through the air, on the ground, and everyone's saying, oh, the Commanders, they're pretty good, they're sneaky, but the defense isn't that great. Two weeks in a row, pretty damn good. Seven sacks on Deshaun Watson, which is kind of common right now for some reason, but it's a team that's really not supposed to have the best edge presence. They're getting after them, but, uh, you know, I, last week that was my favorite part. As good as, as flashy as the offense was, the defense finally did something against the Cardinals offense. This week, I love that they go two weeks in a row. My favorite part this week has kind of been my favorite part in the past weeks as well, or one of my the favorite parts is there is a collection of players making plays on offense. Like not just Jaden Daniels, but again, Jaden Daniels elevating his play, he, him getting better. Just makes everyone else better. There's so many guys involved. I mean, Terry McLaurin was awesome to get De'Ami Brown going. Brian Robinson didn't do a whole lot, but his touchdown was pretty nasty. Uh, you know, and he's been dealing with some things too. Uh, going, him and Eckler, you know, on, on the injury report. Eckler playing well in the comeback. McNichol scores a touchdown two weeks in a row. He looks pretty solid. This just, it reminds me of the Texans last year. Texans, what was everyone's take going into the year? They got a rookie quarterback. They got no offense line. They got no weapons. People said that because they haven't had that in forever. Stroud plays way better than expected, continues to get better, and that elevates everyone else. And then here you go. You got emerging players left and right. This guy's playing good. Hey, the offensive line's pretty good. That is what's happening right now with the Commanders. It's awesome. No matter who they put in there, I think McNichols might be the best spot, the, the best example for that. But several guys, no matter who's in there, they're all playing. They're feeding off each other's, you know, momentum, energy. The vibes are up for the Washington Commanders. They're tough to deal with. I know the Browns aren't the best right now, but could have been a trap game. They went and handled business on both sides of the ball, so they come in at number two. And just before we get to number one, honorable mentions. It's so tough to leave off the Broncos. I, they would be my number four. I really have to narrow it down to three because I want it to be like kind of an accomplishment to make this video. But I still got to shout out the Broncos. 
Haven't beat the Raiders in quite some time. Slow start. They're a little sloppy in the beginning. They took advantage of I it. Mean, if it wasn't for that PS2 pick six, they could have won, but it could have been a much different game. So things kind of went their way there. But second half adjustment, just being the, mo the better, the more dominant team down the stretch, being able to win on offense and defense, getting a couple, couple backs going. Bo Nix doing his job as a scrambler. Sutton being that dog that he is. So... Just giving the Raiders all kinds of problems. They had a big outing, and they feel like a big-time winner. And the Cardinals were number one on the biggest losers part of this video last week. Comeback win from against the Niners. So they, it's a big win because it's momentum building, right, going forward. And we were all kind of down on the Cardinals, and they beat a really good team, and we think it's a really good team in the Niners, and a lot of momentum coming back. You know, Things did kind of go their way. If it wasn't for that Mason fumble, they probably don't win the game. You know, Moody getting injured. So they had some help there. Uh, but it, it, they're definitely a big winner. And they, they badly they badly needed that. Uh, and, and compared to last week, overall impressed. There's just a few other teams that I'm just a little more impressed with. And on to number one. And that's got to be the New York Football Giants winning 29-20, to upsetting Seattle in Seattle. Tough place to play. While missing arguably your top two offensive weapons, at least so far this year, definitely not not debatable. Your number one in Malik Neighbors, who's been awesome. And then Devin Singletary has been pretty good, minus a couple fumbles for them. Didn't matter playing Seattle as they're getting healthier, explosive offense. Biggest factor, the Giants defensive line. They built a really good defensive line, and that alone makes them more of a threat this year compared to last year. Plus other factors. Daniel Jones playing better. The weapons playing better. The coaching's better. The offensive line's playing better. Guys just stepping up. It's just more of a good vibes in there. Like wanting to play. Uh, you know, a lot of mode, high motor players. But that defensive line led by one of the very best. I mean, Aaron Donald's gone right now. Dexter Lawrence could be that guy. I mean, just unstoppable for that, you know, Seattle Seahawks off interior offensive line. Just an absolute force, uh, you know, getting after Geno and even stopping the run. Yeah, that too. I mean, Kenneth Walker's been a stunt on the Lions. No one's been able to run on the Lions. And look at it last week on primetime. Kenneth Walker looked really good against the Lions. And the Giants do not let him get anywhere on them. That, that was extremely impressive. Oh, again, we talked about neighbors being out. Somebody steps up, Darius Slayton. This is this kind of feels like two years ago, like when you like Isaiah Hodgins was stepping up. You had random guys stepping up. Slayton was awesome, uh, and then Singletary out, rookie who we liked a lot. Tyrone Tracy, former receiver turning running back, ran for 129 or so yards. I mean, I mean, who would have expected that against? I mean, Mike McDonald coaches pretty good, pretty good defense over there. Uh, I didn't think about this too. The Giants march down the field right away. They give up that fluky, you know. 99 yard, you know, fumble return. And it's last year's Giants team would have thrown in the towel almost. They would, they would, everything would have went south. They would have got blown out 40 to nothing, whatever, something like that in that scenario. So that makes it even sweeter. And they got that clutch block field goal at the end. That's kind of making up for that first day, yeah, that first series where they allowed that uh, defensive touchdown to the Seattle Seahawks when they when the Giants were about to score. But Daniel Jones doing his thing. You know, was, was there anything super flashy? Maybe not, but some good plays here and there, especially being physical, being tough on the ground. But, yeah, made some throws, made the right reads, got some production, didn't turn the ball over, you know, you know didn't throw an interception. So that is huge. And it felt like the Giants were getting better and improving and weren't going to be a free win. And then the Cowboys game was a little sloppy. They had a chance to win that game. But we see it again, a game they most definitely were not supposed to win. Uh, and they proved to us that they're getting better. And they got actually got guys that can step up and they can overcome bad things. And that defensive front alone, that defensive front alone could, could keep them in any game. So I love that. Biggest winners on the week, the New York Giants with one of the shocker wins. Uh, this week kind of went to how I thought it was going to go. This was one of my better weeks picking because it's a little more predictable in week five, typically how it is. But that was a – they surprised me. They impressed me for sure while missing some guys. They're number one this week. A lot of good teams. It's Again, it's very tough to narrow it down, but that's what we do here. We want to make it a big-time thing to make this list. Now let's go to those losers. Number three biggest loser is going to be the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, just getting dominated, not in the beginning, but getting dominated to the Broncos. They typically beat the Broncos. It's a somewhat of an even matchup, even though most people expected the Broncos to win. But this is one of those where if you can't win that one, I don't know which ones you're going to win because things started great for you. And you're about to go up even bigger. Minshew throws that pick six. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, Pierce was kind of, t you know, hinting at 
uh, a possible quarterback change, and that was kind of messy already. And it's like you know you're not really sure. And it happened. They swap quarterbacks again. It's just uh, coaches being unsure and kind of just throwing in the towel, saying, "Yeah, we, we our quarterback sucked. This is it. We're done." Don't have a running game. Abdullah got going. At least they got that. Devontae Adams kind of injured, holding out, going to get traded. Um, you know, if they didn't get Max Crosby back, and he was awesome this game, but if they didn't get him back, it would have been a legitimate excuse. Maybe they wouldn't have made this list. But things kind of went their way early. They had a lead. They were out playing the Broncos, and it just completely collapsed. Uh, and then you're questioning coaches. Are they playing the right players? Do they even know if they're playing the right players? Are they losing the team? Is Devontae Adams' situation causing it? It's just a mess. It's just an absolute mess. It's a team that you can't really trust to win any games. Of course, they're going to win some games, but... It's a it's a disaster on the disaster level. They're probably number one or number two, like in the NFL. On the week, I'll put them at number three because yeah, they we knew they had a distractions going on, and we knew that the Broncos probably would win this game. Um, so it's not like a huge shocker, but they're number three. It's tough to leave some teams off. We'll have some honor mentions, but there's a lot of big losers this week for sure. Number two is going to be the Cleveland Browns getting just completely dominated, outplayed. It felt like from the start against, uh, well, we thought that maybe they had a chance when JOK had that interception, but uh, you know, just getting dominated by the commanders in this one. And I know the commanders have been better than them, so this was sort of expected, but the commanders haven't played a good defense yet. The, the problem with the Browns here and why they're in the Raiders category of a disaster is not just because the offensive line is one of the worst, maybe probably the worst in football, not just because Deshaun Watson's one of the worst quarterbacks in football, but because they have so much talent and they're just bad. They're one of the worst teams in football, even on defense. Like, I expected the defense to play a little bit better. I mean, they have talent in the secondary. They have talent everywhere. And at least that, I mean, oh, they wasn't every week, but when they were home last year, it looked like one of the better events football. And it's just, it's a disaster. All this talent for nothing. It's a mess. They need a quarterback. They need new offense linemen. It's, it's almost like they're past their window and their window, were, was it ever a window? You know, I, it's, it's an odd situation. They should not be anywhere near this bad. They should have presented some problems to the commanders and did not. This game was over instantly out of all the games today. This was the game that you felt it. Like, this one was done right away. So, it's pretty pathetic for the Browns. It's a bad look for them this week and out the outlook for them. So, they come in at number two. Before we reveal number one biggest loser, I have some honorable mentions that are also big losers. The Niners. People are probably surprised I didn't put the Niners top three. We'll say they're number four. I do think their issues are more fixable, solvable than the other three. So, that's what just left them off. But, man, after the Cardinals looked so bad last week... Niners at home, usually a different animal. They should be able to win. Then you have a big lead. What was a 20, big lead, 23-10 at halftime. They can't close it out. Uh, yeah, a lot that went wrong here. Uh, just turnovers at the end. You know, Mason fumble, Moody getting injured. Maybe they would have won if it wasn't for that. Uh, the big thing here for me in, in terms of the outlook as well is they they can't really get pressure on the quarterback. It's kind of been a thing this year, and it's never been a thing for the Niners, right? So that's a pro I think they'll fix things, they'll, they'll solve some of these things, they'll win, they'll get healthier, they'll win more games, but that's kind of an issue of maybe not being able to get over the hump. In the past, they always had that. It was something else that stopped them from winning the Super Bowl, winning the NFC Championship game. That's something that's an issue. Nick Bosa is being doubled a lot. He's got to carry, basically. Bottom line, he had a pick in the clutch pick in this game. They lost still. But the biggest thing on this one, which I do think it's fixable because I still trust Shanahan, but I thought he had a bad game calling plays here. Uh, the ratio of pass attempts and rush attempts don't like it. It's like they were down the whole game when they were up the whole game. They put too much on Purdy unnecessarily. I don't know if Purdy played that bad. The execution could have been better. Obviously, it didn't end great. Um, and it is funny. I was calling for more that it's, I'm calling for more runs, and Mason kind of fumbled and in a way choked the game. When you look at it that way, yeah, but they needed to run. He was running very well. They needed to run the ball more. They had a lead, so um, couldn't sack Murray. So a lot of wrong things. It was tough. They didn't make the top three. It just bigger disasters than them. Panthers got destroyed by the Bears. We expected the Bears to win in Soldier Field, but at Soldier Field, but uh, disaster. The Panthers, all they got going for them, we knew that this year with, with since Andy Dalton come in some offense. Uh, but when they play a good defense, not so much. So the last couple of weeks when they had good offense, they played bad defenses. So do they actually have a good offense? I like the running game. I like Hubbard. 
but it's just the Panthers still. And then the Patriots, obviously playing a Dolphins team that's looked like arguably the worst in football, but so have the Patriots. Uh, but since Tua's been out, loser of that game is, is going to look really, really bad. They lost, but nothing surprising. We predicted the Patriots to be the worst team in football going into the year. They may very well be that, so nothing super shocking there. But these are your honorable mention. Big, they're also biggest losers. But to the number one biggest loser where you don't want to be. It's going to be the Seattle Seahawks who started the year off pretty damn good. They slipped up against the Lions. Not that big of a deal last week. But they play the Giants who we feel like in Seattle. They have them outmatched. And then their two best offensive players are out. And then you get in the game and they're looking bad. But then they pick... You know, scoop and score a, a fumble for a touchdown, and so they get spotted seven points. I know they had to work for it, essentially. Things are going great, and then boom, they just get completely outplayed the rest of the game. They did have a chance for a comeback at the end. They almost had it. Maybe a little unlucky, but to get that you know outplayed that much in this game, not great. At home, you're supposed to be the better team, and neighbors and Singletary were out. Just very surprised they weren't able to get much going on offense. Uh, when they play a good defensive line, they're in trouble. That's kind of what today proves. So this kind of opens some things up, some flaws up for future opponents here. That's what I don't love, and that's why they're one, uh, another reason why they're the biggest loser, not just because they should have had the Giants outmatched and they were spotted seven points and they just get completely outplayed. The Giants should have won this game by more, to be honest. But, yeah, the offense line's not great. Geno's okay, but he's not the greatest quarterback in the world, obviously. Kenneth Walker played, I thought, very well against the Lions run defense last week. Couldn't get anywhere. I mean, Dexter Lawrence is just too much of a problem in general in this game. DK, back-to-back games, fumbling. And it was a new system, offensive system coming in. Tough to game plan for, but our team's already game planning for it. You know, are they, so are they just going to go downhill? Do they rely on playing the really bad teams like they do in the first few weeks? So it's a bad outing for everything, just this week, for things I, I explained. But it's all, it's also a pretty bad look for the outlook for the rest of the remainder of the year, and it brings up big questions here. And, and defensively, the Lions kind of expose it. The Giants just kept moving the ball, like third downs clutching up. They just kept being able to move the ball, letting Tyrone Tracy run for 120 plus on them, and um, they're you know Slayton torching them. It, it's just too much cushion sometimes, allowing too much separation. So why you know I'm gonna sound like a broken record. I'm repeating myself a lot, but. There are several reasons they are the biggest loser. They, they're at home, and they, they should be the better team. They have them outmatched. They're missing their best players. Things went their way early in this game. They still lost. They still got outplayed. But it also raises questions and concerns for future opponents for this year. And it makes you think. It's not for sure. It makes you think, man, they're probably not as good as the early season you know, Seahawks because they played easier teams, and they were a tougher game plan there. So... Uh, but two teams we mentioned in the bigger loser, the biggest losers columns play each other in Thursday Night Football, Seattle Seahawks versus San Francisco 49ers. Who knows what's going to happen there? The Niners, believe it or not, do not have anything near the Giants' pass rush, defensive line. It's crazy to think about that, but that's how it is today. So maybe Seattle be, could be able to do something in that game, but the Niners should have some... Uh, should have a productive night on offense. That could be a offensive game there, but who knows with those two teams, uh, you know, choking games right now, both two teams in the NFC West. That that thing's wide open. If, I mean, if, if, I know the Niners aren't healthy, so it's not really fair. Nobody's healthy. No one's healthy. But if the Rams weren't the most depleted team in football, that might be the best team in that division. So I'd say if the Niners had, you know, McCaffrey, and, and they're pretty depleted too. But and they got health, for the most part, healthy in this game. Getting off topic a little bit. But that's an interesting division right now. So, uh, yeah, we had some interesting games today. Uh, Ravens, Bengals is a wild one. I guess the Ravens offense is a big winner. Defense, I mean, that that's not a Ravens defense. So, I know, the, but the Bengals offense, I mean, looks great. They have one win this year. Their offense is playing good enough to have way more than that. At the end, Zach Taylor decision-making, brutal, playing for a long field goal, um, relying, or relying on that when you're throwing, you know, not even throwing the ball when you're throwing all over them. Uh, and icing your own kicker, brutal. I like Zach Taylor, but not there. Um, Vikings would have been a big winner, but they 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 got outplayed in the second half. You know, kind of slipped up. Um, I think Kirk Cousins and the Falcons for signing Kirk Cousins a big winner. The Buccaneers defense is a big loser, but I do love their offense. Um, so we can mention some other things here, but uh, we will talk about every team in the Monday night video. Don't you worry, we got you. Uh, covering for week five, and then we'll be on to our week six videos. Exciting times. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss any of this content. We got the most and the best content on the planet, especially during the NFL season. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.